Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So this is another mail and donations video for June 2024. No donations this time, but I got a couple of uh, exciting things, I think. Uh, mostly things I bought on AliExpress and eBay. But the most uh, exciting one, I think, is this one. So let's get right to it then and check out what I got the last month. First package is this one. Uh, this is uh, sent from Norway and it's uh, something I bought from a guy. <laughs> Might be interesting. Alright, so this is the A8 Pico car. And there's a Raspberry Pi Pico. And this is for Atari 8-bit machines. And it's a cartridge. Now you can connect it to your PC and just copy files over to it. And it supports ROM and CAR and XCX. And some limited support for ATR files. And this card is a clone of a Raspberry Pi Pico. It's called RP2040, I have never heard about it, so not really sure what it actually is, but uh, it's supposed to work like uh, Pico, but uh, probably a Chinese clone that has some difference to it. It has a USB-C port, uh, actually has a Raspberry Pi chip on it, at least it's uh, labeled. So this one I'm gonna build and uh, try out in another episode sometime later. The whole thing was quite cheap, I just paid only uh, around uh, 35 euros for it. So that should be an easy build I guess. Next I have a small china package here and it's uh, a DAC decoder, a few parts, actually I got two. And the DAC decoder, uh, like this board here, it actually takes a digital audio signal and converts it to uh, analog. And the reason I got this was because I want to try it with the Sidkick Pico board, which I uh, recently made a video about. You will see that video before this, so this is kind of strange timing, but uh, that's how it is. I film um, the products I get as I get them in. Okay, the next package is also China. It comes from um, AliExpress, I know because of the bag and the label. Okay, it says uh, 32 Wi-Fi and uh, CH34C. There's it. Yes, now I remember. I just had to look it up. Uh, anyway, this is a ESP32 room with Wi-Fi. It's a development board and it has um, Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth. Interesting board. I just bought it now because I want to play around a little bit with it. Not really sure that will make it into videos, but um, yeah. Well, look at that. This is modern stuff, not retro. But obviously you can use it for retro purposes if you want to. Then we have this little package. It says uh, came from Oslo, but I think it's from... Um... <coughs> more easternly like Asia. Ah finally yes I've been waiting for some more uh, DIN connectors that I ordered and uh, <laughs> I got a bunch of them they were really cheap this was on uh, AliExpress and uh, these can be used as power contacts for uh, the 1581 or 1541 two floppy disk drives. And that actually completes the build of the second 1541 drive. <laughs> Only built it so far, I haven't tested it at all. I just need to install a floppy drive. Yeah, hope it fits and it seems like it does. Perfect. So this is just the 4-pin DIN connector. 
Yeah, I'm gonna solder it in right away and uh, be done with that. They were sold in packages of uh, five and I, yeah, I got two packages. I, I'm sure I'm never gonna use them up, all of them. But they were so cheap that, uh, yeah, I just got them. Just to make sure it's all the way down flush to the board. All right, second 1581 floppy disk drive PCB is finished. And uh, on this one, I have installed the regular DOS plus the Jiffy DOS ROMs. And this is even better than the one I built before. I got the proper dip switch there and uh, yeah, a little bit, um, yeah, a better suitable capacitor. So now I just need to test this and hopefully it works. I don't think, I hope I didn't do any mistakes. Another small package with um, China letters on it. Have no idea what it is. Aha, yes. Um, this was something I have had use for a couple of times, but uh, I didn't have it. And it's that kind of enameled wire. It's a tin copper wire that um, have some sort of enamel coating on it. This is for protection, the tape. And this you can use to patch up uh, repairs on a motherboard, for example, or as regular connection wires. This is uh, quite stiff as well. And when you use your soldering iron on it, it burns away the enamel coating so you can use solder on it. It was quite cheap and came in uh, several uh, different thicknesses. This is 0.4 millimeters. Maybe I should have gone for 0.3 but it's always hard to judge by looking at the picture with those small measurements. Now is this uh, the real thing or is it fake? For one it should not conduct <laughs> when you touch with the probes and it doesn't. So that's good. And uh, if I use my soldering iron, I just recently turned it off. So my hope was that it was still a little bit hot. Now it should be conductive. Now just turn it on again. Use a little bit of solder there. Hopefully that burns away uh, that coating. I took a piece and just scraping off a little bit here. So question is, is this real copper or is it just colored aluminum? Hard to tell. If you have any suggestion how to test if it's real copper, then let me know in the comments. But now at least it that conducts. Yeah. Hard to tell if it's real copper or not. It doesn't feel heavy. It's quite light and uh, it could be aluminium. Here's one of those uh, packages with packages within the package. One there and uh, one there. Ah oh, yeah, this is uh, this kind of uh, micro switches. I did have a couple of uses for this and I had to buy one or two and uh, found this bag. <laughs> I think it's uh, maybe 50. <laughs> so that should be enough for a long time. Very cheap, obviously. Okay, next one. What's this then? Aliexpress also. Aha, yeah. This is uh, 3M. Obviously it's fake 3M, not the real 3M. This is kind of like this, this silicone rubbery stuff. It has a double-sided tape 
or tape on one side and it's 20 millimeters but it can be used to cut if you need specific type of uh, feeds for computers or other stuff uh, you can cut this to length and use it so this I bought actually for that Commodore 128 keyboard I restored and I actually was missing the feet and I couldn't find feet that was the exact match so I got this one it has match on the the width of uh, this thickness is all right and I can just cut it to length so handy to have in uh, certain <laughs> situations I guess yeah then we have a little package that came from uh, Germany Niederaula and it says uh, circuit board components <laughs> okay, what do we have here? Idea Spark. So this is another one of those um, development board. This is an ESP32 board and uh, it has all kinds of features, including a small OLED screen. Yeah, and it has um, <laughs> lots of other stuff going on with it i haven't bought it for any particular purpose just to have it around in case i am uh, gonna start with some project i just got it on ebay because it was um, very cheap only seven euros then there's a package from the united kingdom and uh, it says uh, video cable this came from ebay and uh, yeah, this is something I got for another computer that I recently got. Not particularly exciting, but uh, I just needed to test out that computer. Yeah, it's a video cable from the Retro Computer Shack in the UK. And uh, he makes a lot of good quality cables. And this one is for the Sinclair Spectrum 128K or 2 Plus. If you remember one of my mail and donations uh, recently, I showed you I got a very <laughs> badly damaged uh, Setic Spectrum Plus 2 and it kind of started up, but I couldn't get a good picture from it using RF. So I just needed a cable for it and this is uh, one that uh, takes RGB output and uh, goes to SCART. Yeah, not much more to say about that. Um, then we have this one and uh, this one I got from my friend uh, John from Bergen and uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about this one. Yeah, and it looks like a chip, and it is a chip, but uh, it's a special chip. Yes, it's the JCPU64, and it looks very nice. So the JCPU64 is actually a 6510 Commodore 64 CPU that has been reproduced and being emulated uh, fully with this. I haven't seen a any reviews or anything but I just heard that it works perfectly for most you know the 6510 for the Commodore 64 machine it's not produced anymore so you cannot find them unless you find some used and they are starting to get expensive and hard to find so <laughs> it's very nice that uh, these projects come up and uh, yeah the JCPU 64 really excited to test it out Oh, that's a lot of uh, small <laughs> SMD components on the backside. Uh, I hope this was not produced by hand, <laughs> but maybe it was. Must be a lot of work. This one, of course, also replaces the 8500 CPU, which is the same almost as just a little bit modern variant of the 6510, uh, made by uh, Johnny from Finland, and he is also behind a lot of other cool projects, World of Johnny, and uh, he also made the JCIA chip, which replaces the CIA chips on the C64. It has been tested to be 100% compatible, and uh, yeah, it's just a drop-in replacement. You just place this where 
The old CPU was, obviously you need to have um, it in a socket, uh, or you don't need to, but it's more convenient, so. I'm gonna test it now, see if it works. I'll use the gem in my Commodore 64 collection, my golden C64, which I built myself from a motherboard replica made by BWAC. So this should work perfectly. I built this in May 2023, so uh, you should definitely watch those videos if you haven't already. Look at that beautiful motherboard. Replica BWAC 2023 and it's a 250 469 board revision 4. Yeah, so obviously this has a CPU in the socket because everything is in socket. This is kind of a rare and unusual motherboard for the C64 and it's very cool. This is the CPU, so just gonna remove it and in with the new one. The new one doesn't require any cooling, I think. It's uh, FPGA based, so it doesn't get warm. By the way, this is a modern uh, memory module that contains all the 64 Ks of memory. So what direction does it go? Yeah, it has a notch there, so it goes this way. It has thin rounded pins, so they should go well into a socket. A little bit hard to push it down. There it is. All right, let's see now, does it uh, work? Yes, it does. <laughs> nice. Is there any difference? No. <laughs> I'm not going to do a very extensive test of this chip since it's supposedly 100% compatible. I'm first just going to test uh, the diagnostics cartridge, Let's see if it behaves differently. It says 6510U7. Well, on this machine, it's uh, it's U6. Well, it seems to behave uh, normally, so um, nothing wrong there. And the bads are because I don't have the diagnostics cartridge harness to test the porch and stuff. Let's try with a game then, the Donkey Kong cartridge. <laughs> kind of cool PCB. Yes, I know this is uh, Adrian Black's music, but uh, I like it too. <laughs> and this machine has an original SID in it, it works fine. Yeah, this seems to work just fine. No issues. Oh. Yes, that's a good replacement for a CPU. Um, and it doesn't cost a lot. I saw it uh, for around 40 US dollars on some sellers. And uh, yeah, I think that's less than you have to pay if you want to buy a used one on eBay, for example. So extremely nice that we have these replacements now and yeah, this one works 100% and hopefully it will last for a long time. Maybe not as long as the original <laughs> CPU, I don't know. Another little package came all the way from China all by itself and the declaration says um, electronic chips. <laughs> all right, that was... That was it, that was the packaging. Well, they look to be in good shape, so they survived. There isn't much to say about these chips other than I bought them on eBay because um, I need them for a computer. It's a 74LS133 chips and that's a 13 gate uh, NAND chip, so I'm gonna use it or I might get used for it on a Commodore repair, so. We'll see about that. Didn't cost much, couple of dollars, I think. <laughs> a 
So I got five even if I only need one. All right, that was it for this month's mail and donations. Um, I'm playing here uh, on YouTube from my other YouTube channel where I fly drones. And uh, if you want to subscribe to that, then just take a look in the description of this video. There's a link there. All right, so there won't be any more mail and donations videos uh, on this side of the summer. I'll begin again with that in the autumn. We'll see when. I haven't really done any purchases lately, so I'm not going to get a lot uh, the next few months. It's uh, soon vacation time here, so um, you just have to wait for that. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and uh, special thanks to my patrons and the members. See you. Bye bye.